Hello students, uh, chapter 11, problem set number one, helpful hints. Now, I'm just going to help you set it up, and I'm not going to solve the whole thing for you, but I think I, the suggestions I'm going to make are going to help tremendously. All right, so uh, here we have a ball rolling without slipping off a roof, and the ball is going to then subsequently fall to the ground and then land a certain distance from the edge of the roof point directly below the roof to on the ground. So uh, suggestion is, suggestion number one for part A is use energy as a method to solve for, in this case, the angular speed of the cylinder about its center as it just leaves the roof. Okay. So let's, uh, let's establish what state one and state two are. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is kind of sketch up some uh, ideas here. So let's say that the ball is going to start at rest, and we're going to consider this state one. Okay, this is the state of the energy right there. And then state two will be the point at which the ball is going to leave the roof. So let's say here's the ball. Now notice I'm going to indicate that the speed that it has, eventually you're going to have to calculate the speed that it leaves the roof based on the angular speed. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But right here, let's consider that state two. Okay. So that's state two of the energy. All right, so let's uh, sketch it out here. So state one, the energy that it has at the place where it just starts to roll down the roof, okay, state one, uh, we have uh, u, g, and we'll call that one, all right? And then at state two, we have when it's at the base, at the bottom of the of the roof's edge, it's going to have kinetic energy of rolling, okay, it's going to have, or rotation, however you want to call it, rolling plus kinetic energy of translation. Okay, so it's going to have those two flavors. Now, uh, use, use of g is that gravitational potential. That's where it starts at rest. It's the only kind of energy it has. Uh, that's going to be m g h. Now we're going to define what h is in terms of the geometry that we have set up there. So let's let's take a look at that. Uh, h is going to be defined as the distance. Let's find a color that works here. Is going to be defined as the distance that's going to fall. Uh, that is going to travel along the length of the roof L. We have angle theta. Uh, let's define that. H is going to equal L sine theta. Okay, so that's we're going to express h in terms of L sine data. Okay, back to blue, turquoise. How do you like the color turquoise? Uh, that's going to equal kinetic energy of rolling, one half i omega squared plus and kinetic energy translation, one half m e squared. Isn't that something? Now. I'm just going to say, all right, I want you to work through the given quantities and fundamental constants to uh, determine a speed for the angular speed. So uh, I'll, I'll at least give you what uh, the angular speed is, so, so you know that you're on the right track. You should get 62.61 radians per second. Okay, so this is for part A. All right, I want to see more, than, more, more work than what I have written here. Uh, I've given you some big hints, okay, h is equal to L sine theta, and then what you make of that is determine the um, angular speed. Now, how do you handle this velocity here? Okay, you're probably going, all right, there's the omega here. How do I turn velocity into omega? Well, remember, we have that magic conversion. So remember that uh, omega is equal to V over R? Okay, well, substitute for V, omega R, All right? So that's how you get everything in that, in state two in terms of omega. All right, there's your helpful hint. All right, that's part A. Okay, now for part B, uh, now that you have the total energy of the ball when it reaches the bottom edge of the roof, you're gonna calculate the speed the ball is gonna have once it reaches the roof. So let's take it from the standpoint uh, what is that speed? Okay, again, uh, energy is state one. Okay. It's, almost, it's almost, like, almost like a carbon copy of what I've written up here. But this time you're going to express uh, the velocity once it reaches the bottom of the incline plane. So 
we're going to start at state one, gravitational potential energy. Okay, that's going to convert into kinetic energy of rolling. Okay, the roll plus the kinetic energy translation. Okay. All right, and once again, uh, one half i omega squared plus one half m v squared. Okay, so here's that mgh once again, h being l sine theta. But this time, you're going to come up with an expression for the velocity, okay, the linear velocity. So for omega, uh, you're going to substitute v over r okay, for omega. All right? Things are going to cancel out. Uh, the mass is going to appear in each term. That cancels. Uh, you're going to cancel an r squared, you know, the one half, well, not the one half m r squared, but in this case, this is a solid cylinder, which is, yeah, one half m r squared. r squared is going to cancel with the r squared in the denominator once you substitute omega v over r. Um, and then it should shake out, uh, and I'll give you the speed. So after it's all said and done, again, helpful hint, and you should get something in order of 6.26 meters per second. Okay, what do you do with that? Well, I'm going to leave it up, leave the rest up to you. And it's simply, it's just a matter of projectile motion. So remember, what gives you the downrange distance? It'll be the x component. What gets you the time that it takes to get to the ground? Well, that's going to be found using the y component of that velocity. Okay? And you're given an angle of, wow, 30 degrees. That should, that should be enough for you folks. All right. So, um, and the angle, in case, so it's nestled there, and it's a, it's a velocity that's directed below the horizontal. All right. There's a helpful hint, I hope, for problem seven. And I want you to fill in all the other points here. Okay. So use energy to solve this problem.